So, the last part of this chapter is one of the most difficult things to talk about because, um, <laughs> well, you are just required to know the principles or the basics of how cell signaling works, but you do not need to know actual examples of cell signaling. In fact, the first concrete example of cell signaling will only be seen in chapter 14, homeostasis, which is in A2. So the thing about cell signaling for chapter 4, all we just have to know is the basics, uh, what it is, how does it generally work, and I will also tell you what you require to know for your exams, for your AS exams at least. So first question is, what exactly is cell signaling all about? To put it into words, cell signaling is just what happens when cells communicate with each other. For example, I'm drawing out three cells here, cell A, cell B, and cell C. Cell A will tell cell B to do something, okay? And cell B responds by saying, okay, I will do it. However, if I were to put another cell here, cell C, cell C will respond by saying no. So this is actually referred to as cell signaling, or in some books, they will also refer to it as cell-to-cell -cell communication. It sounds extremely unique and far-fetched, but it's not. In fact, cell signaling or cell-to-cell -cell communication constantly happens in our body without us realizing it. For example, your brain telling your heart to pump faster is an example of cell signaling. Your adrenal glands telling your pupils to dilate is also another example of cell-to-cell -cell communication or signaling that is happening. These are just specific examples that are taking place in our body. So we will be looking at facets of cell signaling in chapter 14 and also chapter 15, by the way, in A2. But for now, we just have to know the basics. So let's look at one example of cell signaling. In this example, Cell A is a pancreatic cell and cell B is a liver cell. Now, you don't need to memorize this example. You just have to understand what's going on. For example, cell A will basically release a signal that says, please break down glycogen. And cell B will go, okay, I have glycogen and I will break it down. The reason why it wants to break down glycogen is especially when your body doesn't have enough glucose inside the blood. So uh, A tells B to do something about it and to remedy the situation. Here's the thing. A and B are actually very far away from each other. They are not directly next to each other, by the way, in my, like, like in my diagram. In fact, the pancreas and the liver are situated quite a distance. So the question over here is, how does one cell communicate with another cell? Or how does one cell talk to the other cell? The first way the cell talk is by releasing chemical signals or ligands. And an example of ligands or chemical signals are just hormones. Uh, examples of hormones that you might want to just be familiar with, especially for A2, will be hormones such as insulin, glucagon, adrenaline, um, these are just uh, ADH. These are just some examples of hormones that we will be talking about in chapter 14. But for now, all you just have to know is the first cell sends out a signal by releasing chemical signals or ligands. You can use the word chemical signals or ligands interchangeably. Do not worry about that. Then comes the next question. How does cell B listen to the signal? Which means how does cell B receive the signal. The way cell B actually receives the signal, if you remember, let's go back to the previous videos that we talked about. I told you that on the cell surface membrane, there are these membrane proteins, and in some of the membrane proteins, they can act as receptors. And I've circled the receptor proteins over here, and the function of the receptor proteins are to receive the signaling molecule. Here you go. We are now tying in a previous video to today's video. So cell B will have this special types of receptor proteins, which I'm just drawing on its cell surface membrane right there. And if you notice, the receptor 
is a complementary receptor, which means the word complementary receptor means that the chemical signal and the receptor are matching. And when they match, they can bind to each other. So when the chemical signal binds to the receptor on cell B, cell B will go, okay, I have received your signal. I will do what you told me to do. Fundamentally, this is how one cell communicates with another cell. The first cell talks by releasing out chemical signals, and the second cell listens by having receptors that can receive the chemical signals or ligands. But that's not the end of it. The next aspect that we actually have to look at is something known as signal transduction. This is just a situation. Now, if you remember, in cell B, uh, they had the receptor protein on their cell surface membrane. And I'm also going to draw out some glycogen molecules inside that. Again, it is very important to know that you do not need to memorize this. Okay. Now, imagine a chemical signal or a ligand. And the function of this ligand is to inform cell B to break down the glycogen. It's to tell cell B that, hey, you need to break down the glycogen and provide glucose for the body. But the thing is, when the chemical signal binds to the receptor protein, they have bound to the receptor protein, but the problem is the receptor protein and the glycogen are still very far away. So the question over here is, how do they communicate with each other? Another different signal is produced inside the cell. This is called an internal signal. So what happens is there is a conversion of the original signal into an internal signal within the cell. This is referred to as something called signal transduction. Now, some of my students will then ask, why then can't the chemical signal just enter the cell by itself? The reason is because most chemical signals, especially if they are protein-based, they will be polar and they will be extremely large. So the cell surface membrane will be a barrier to prevent them from entering. So what needs to happen here is the chemical signal needs to bind with the receptor protein and a different signal is then produced inside the cell. This is referred to as signal transduction. Now, it is extremely important to know what the meaning of signal transduction is. You need to memorize that meaning right there. And also, you must know that signal transduction usually has two important processes happening, which are cascade reaction and signal amplification. So let's talk a little bit about the cascade reaction. So let's look at another example, if, we, if you would allow me. Again, these are very confusing examples. The best way to think of a cascade reaction is, again, don't memorize this. Imagine there is an original signaling molecule. And this original signaling molecule is saying, please do something. Okay. And I'm going to draw out a few enzymes. And I'm also going to draw out, instead of glycogen, I'm going to put a target inside the cell as mitochondria. Now, notice something interesting here, that the enzymes A, B, and C are actually inactive. And I have represented them as sleeping enzymes. They are not actually sleeping, but they are just inactive. Now, the function of the original signaling molecule, which is a hormone or ligand, is to tell the cell to produce more ATP. But the problem is, the original signaling molecule is outside the cell, and the mitochondrion is so far away. So the mitochondrion cannot hear the original signaling molecule. How then can the original signaling molecule send its message all the way to the mitochondrion? what needs to happen here is signal transduction. And during signal transduction, what exactly happens is the original signaling molecule binds to a complementary receptor on the cell surface membrane. The receptor will then send a signal to the enzyme A. 
And the enzyme A, which is inactive, will then become active. And when it becomes active, it will then send the signal to inactive enzyme B, which will then become active. And inactive enzyme B will continue sending the signal to inactive enzyme C, and inactive enzyme C will then send the final signal to the mitochondrion. And in this case over here, the mitochondrion will go, oh, fine, I will produce more ATP as required. Okay, so this is how cascade reaction actually takes place. Cascade reaction is just, is just a game of passing on the message from one enzyme to another enzyme to another enzyme to another enzyme until it reaches the target inside the cell. So this is what cascade reaction is all about. Now, but cascade reaction is not the only thing that needs to happen. Another thing that also needs to happen is something known as signal amplification. During signal amplification, there is just one original signaling molecule. There are very little inactive enzyme A, more inactive enzyme B, and even more inactive enzymes C. So why does this actually need to be built as such? The reason is because when, in, when the original signaling molecule binds to the receptor, it will activate an enzyme on the cell surface membrane and the enzyme produces something referred to as a secondary messenger. You don't have to memorize all that in detail. I'll tell you which one you need to know for your exam. And the secondary messenger will then activate the enzymes, which are the green enzymes. So the green enzymes become awake or active. And when they become active, they are able to activate even more enzyme B. And when enzyme B become more activated, they will activate even more enzyme C. So this is called signal amplification. So what happens to the strength of the signal? If you imagine, the first enzyme is like, produce more ATP. The second enzymes are like, produce more ATP. The third group of enzymes are like, produce more ATP. And the fourth group are yelling it out. Produce more ATP. It's like an echoing of the message into the cell. Or it's just like a domino effect which makes the message stronger. And in doing so, with cascade reaction and signal amplification, it ensures that the signal is strong enough to reach the target inside the cell. That is what signal transduction is all about. Signal Signal transduction is just, uh, number one, allowing a cascade reaction to happen inside the cell where it activates one enzyme which activates another enzyme which activates another enzyme. But in doing so, it strengthens the signal by a process known as signal amplification. So with that being said, what you need to know for the exam purpose is as follows. When you draw the cell surface membrane, outside, the receptor is facing the outside of the cell, and there is an inactive enzyme near the receptor, and there is also a protein called the G protein. So what happens normally is the chemical signal or the ligand will first bind to a complementary receptor on the cell surface membrane, this causes the G protein to move towards the enzyme. The G protein will activate the enzyme just like a switch. So when the G protein activates the enzyme, the enzyme will then produce a secondary messenger, and the secondary messenger begins a cascade reaction. And if you remember, the cascade reaction is just when it activates some enzymes which activates more enzymes which activates even more enzymes and in doing so it amplifies the signal so that it's able to reach the target within the cell. To simplify this, so I'm again going to draw the cell surface membrane. I'm going to draw out the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. The cloud is just representing the target inside the cell and the green and purple things are just inactive enzymes. So what needs to happen first is as follows. When the chemical signal or the ligand binds to the complementary receptor, the G protein activates an enzyme on the cell surface membrane. So what happens is that enzyme which was activated by the G protein will produce something called a secondary messenger.
the secondary messenger's function is to begin the cascade reaction in which it will activate a group of enzymes. That group of enzymes will activate even more enzymes and it will begin that domino effect or the signal amplification to strengthen or to amplify the original signal. And thus, due to this cascade reaction and signal amplification, it will reach the target within the cell and the cell will respond accordingly depending on what the original signal told it to do. This is how cell signaling happens. So for the exam, you will just have to know that number one, the ligand binds to a complementary receptor. And number two, the G protein activates the enzymes. And number three, the enzyme on the cell surface membrane produces a secondary messenger. Number four, the secondary messenger begins the cascade reaction, which causes, number five, signal amplification or strengthening of the signal. And number six, it reaches the target within the cell and the cell produces a response according to what the original signal told it to do. That's what we have to know for cell-to-cell -cell signaling or signal transduction.